Helen of Troy, the legendary face that launched a thousand ships. Or did she? Were the Greek heroes of old truly valorous and bold? Did Cassandra have the gift of sight and warned of Troy's apocalypse at the hands of the Greeks? Hundreds of books have been written and several films have been made in attempt to answer these questions. Welcome to Traveler's Tales. I am your host, Greg Alonzo. What we hope to achieve with Traveler's Tales is to open up healthy discussion and debate on how and why so many tales from antiquity, several millennia old, still arouse curiosity and interest even to this day. We post each week on Tuesday and Friday. Welcome to part one of four, The Truth About Troy. Let's begin with Troy. Did the fabled city actually exist? In 1873, amateur archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann made the discovery of a lifetime. According to Schliemann, he used Homer's Iliad to locate the fabled city of Troy. Since antiquity, the site of Hisarlik in northwest Turkey has long been identified as the most likely site of Troy. Archaeological evidence concurs that Troy was founded some 4,000 years ago. What about Troy the legend? Just how much is myth, legend, or fact? Historians generally agree that the Trojan War took place near the end of the Bronze Age, roughly around the year 1200 before the Common Era. The earliest accounts of the Trojan War are attributed to Homer, a poet who lived several centuries after the war was thought to have taken place. According to Homer, the Mycenaean Greek heroes set out to recover Helen, the legendary queen of Sparta. She was the wife of King Menelaus, the brother of King Agamemnon of Mycenae. According to Homer, Helen had been abducted by Paris, Prince of Troy. Led by Agamemnon and inspired by the inimitable Achilles, Homer makes claim that a force of 10,000 Greeks attacked Troy. Was Helen then truly the face that launched a thousand ships? What do you think? Let's begin by separating the facts from the fiction. Fact. We know that Troy existed. Fact. Troy was rich and powerful and its influence was felt throughout the Mediterranean Sea. Fact. Archaeologists concur that there was a war and Troy was put to the torch. Let us begin by taking a more detailed look at the facts. Troy was the economic giant of the time. One could easily argue that all shipping lanes led to the fabled city as Troy was the commercial heartbeat of both the Mediterranean and Black Seas. With this in mind, we could deduce that Troy's economic outreach impacted the city-states of Greece, Anatolia, Egypt, and the rest of the known world of the time. All one has to do is to look at a map. The Greeks were expanding everywhere. They had established themselves throughout the islands of the Aegean Sea and western Anatolia, which is today's Turkey. It was only a matter of time before the Greeks would come into conflict with the Trojans over trade spheres. If the Greeks wanted to continue their expansion eastward, they needed to act and act quickly. All that was needed was a pretext. Was Helen then the needed pretext? As legend would have it, yes. With the abduction of Helen, Menelaus demanded retribution from Troy for the infamous act by Paris. King Agamemnon was always quick to see opportunity. He turned an act of infidelity into the pretext he needed to rally the Greeks to war. Agamemnon demanded the immediate return of Helen. Should King Priam not act forthwith, this would lead only to one outcome, war. Every Greek kingdom rallied around Agamemnon. The legendary Greek heroes of the time were only too ready for war, adventure, and plunder. Among them were Odysseus, Nestor, Ajax, and the greatest of them all, Achilles. Quick to follow their leader to glory, the steadfast Myrmidons were with Achilles. Do keep in mind that Homer was a poet, not a historian, regardless whether true or not. What an epic tale. Imagine, if you will, those heroes of antiquity laden in their shining bronze armor and weapons blazing in the midday sun, fighting duels at close quarters. The pinnacle matchup, of course, 
Achilles and Prince Hector. These promacoi, or duelists, were the greatest combatants of their respective kingdoms. Glory, courage, honor, duty, friendship, and of course, death. The Iliad explores these issues at length. Homer accurately depicts the nature and brutality of war and its deeply personal consequences. What of the fabled wooden horse? Did it actually exist? According to the tale, the horse was the brainchild of the ever-clever Odysseus. The gigantic horse of wood was gifted to the people of Troy for defeating the Greeks after ten long years of warfare. Despite the warnings from King Priam's daughter Cassandra, beware of Greeks bearing gifts, her cries fell on deaf ears and the trophy was brought into the city. That night as the people of Troy slept and celebrated and drunken debauchery, a detachment of Greek hoplites, foot soldiers, descended from the horse. Led by Odysseus, the Greeks opened the gates of the city and the slaughter began. The unwary Trojans would then suffer a full measure of savagery at the hands of their conquerors. Next, I would like to take a look at two pivotal characters in Homer's Iliad, Cassandra and, of course, Helen. Legend has it that Cassandra had the gift of sight, yet no one heeded her pleas admonishing the Greeks. Why? According to the ancients, Cassandra received the gift to see the future from the god Apollo. However, there was a condition. Cassandra had agreed to share Apollo's bed. Cassandra then chose to tempt fate and reneged her promise to Apollo. Humiliated, Apollo's copious response was to curse the young princess. Though Cassandra had the gift of sight, no one would believe her. Such is the fate of those who make game of the gods. Yet Cassandra was fated to suffer an even greater indignity. After the fall of Troy, Cassandra sought refuge in the temple of Athena. However, the princess was abducted and brutally raped by Ajax the Lesser. In the end, Cassandra did get some form of revenge. Legend has it that she intentionally left a chest behind in Troy. She had cursed the chest, and the first Greek to open it would go mad. To share in the spoils of victory, Cassandra's box was presented to the Greek leader Eurypylus, whose fate was then sealed. What of Cassandra? According to the legend, she was taken by Agamemnon as his palake, his concubine. Upon their return to Mycenae, the wife of Agamemnon, Queen Clytemistra, along with her lover Aegisthus, murdered both the king and his palake. Homer portrays Helen as a dejected and regretful figure. One thing for sure, Helen's beauty has inspired artists, poets, playwrights, and filmmakers throughout the centuries. My favorite depiction of the fabled Helen is by Christopher Marlowe in his tragedy, Dr. Faustus. The face that launched a thousand ships and burnt the topless towers of Ilum. Was Homer's Iliad fact or an epic tale of fiction? Did 10,000 Greek warriors lay siege for 10 years to the city of Troy and eventually defeat the Trojans? Did the Greeks sack Troy? What of Helen, the proclaimed most beautiful woman in the world? Was she a blameless ingenue or a salacious temptress? This is the end of part one. Feel free to leave your questions or comments. For your convenience, I have also provided our email. In the next episode of Traveler's Tales, we will discuss your comments and questions at length. Please like and subscribe to our channel and help us grow. For your added convenience, the little bell icon will let you know each time we release the next video. Thank you for joining us on Traveler's Tales. Until our next episode, may the wind always be at your back. Cartistos.